All right. It seems like everything is all set. Good morning, everyone, and welcome uh, to the second half of 2024 market forecast. And I am going to give you guys my 10 favorite stocks for the last six months of the year. So um, this uh, webinar is going to be recorded and um, it's going to be sent out probably by the end of the day today. So I just want to make sure, just really quick, a quick sound check. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Type a one in the chat box if you can hear me. And if you could see the screen, all right. Had a little glitch this morning, so I do apologize. We're five minutes late. <laughs> all right. Good morning, everyone. All right. What a beautiful day, right? Okay. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, my name is Danka Metcalf. I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutLoud.com. Uh, I do own a company, uh, Trade Out Loud, which is a trading education firm that specializes in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, and actively invest into the market. Um, I have 10 plus years in investment banking. So I come from the investing field. I come from the market field. I come from financial field. So it's uh, uh, I didn't make too many changes uh, to my uh, background to get into trading. Um, I run a swing trading service for stocks and ETFs. Uh, and this is the first program that uh, literally was created. Uh, and uh, we actually had a lot of following. And that was back in 2010. I know a long time ago. So 14 years, we're going strong. It's still one of our strongest programs out there. Um, ba basically, with this program, you're unchaining yourself from the desk, from the computer. And this was ultimately my goal, because this is where you have your money working for you. And I also have, uh, I have actually 10 stocks for you guys uh, to um also uh, to share and to analyze for the end of the year. And these are my favorite stocks that could potentially have an incredible growth for 2024 till the end of 2024. And I also have a bonus for you guys. So uh, stick around to the very end because that is going to be the surprise and it's an ETF. OK, so it's going to be a huge surprise and something that you could do right now. You could do today. You could actually set a buy limit order uh, for Monday. So it's it's that cool. Uh, all right. I also run a um, trading room and that is for active traders and that is for generating income, because first, what do we need? We need the income to pay the bills and whatever we have extra, we're putting into an account uh, where our money can work for us, right? So if you need that extra income, we do have a trading room. It's the futures trading room. I only trade the power hours. So basically the trading room is open for about two hours every single day, two, two, two hours, two and a half hours every single day in which we uh, try to analyze the market. Uh, we analyze the market and we try to come up with the uh, best uh, trading ideas. We actually had um, a phenomenal week. We have had a phenomenal beginning of the year, like year to date is outstanding. And this allows me to put more and more money into my wealth accounts. Um, I do offer day trading education and swing trading education and investing education. Now, there is a little catch here. We're going to come up because a lot of traders are not uh, very interested in investing and swing trading. So we're going to diversify the two. So we are going to separate the two. We're going to come with a brand new investing course that is going to be ready this fall. And it is going to be outstanding. I am a uh, Columbia uh, alumni, so I studied investing at Columbia University, and I could share a lot of my uh, process. Uh, I can share a lot of my knowledge with you guys in regards to value investing and as well into technical investing as well. Uh, so I am trained to do this, to do what I do every single day. Um, I specialize in high velocity trades, whether it is for swing trading or investing or whether it is for uh, day trading, 
velocity trade and I'm going to share what velocity is. And if you have paid attention and the emails that I have sent out, these invites that I have sent out uh, for you guys to be here, uh, you probably have noticed that I have attached a small video with a forecast for the futures market for the whole 2024. And this is something that we do every single year. And these are the major benchmarks, right? The market benchmarks. We talk about NASDAQ, we talk about S&P, we talk about Russell, uh, and we talk about uh, the Dow. And this is the forecast for 2024. And if you paid attention, I've mentioned the word velocity in uh, quite a few times. And here today, I'm going to show you what creates the velocity. And it's actually so simple. And it's going to be a great takeaway if you guys are going to stick around. Uh, so what I do is I'm the designer of an institutional proprietary trading system. The reason I'm not the creator is because I cannot take credit for technical analysis. Technical analysis has been around for a really long time. Uh, but I do specialize in six layers of price support resistance. I do specialize in specific trigger times and also specific price zones because not many of you probably know, only a very, very few people know. And in fact, this is the best kept secret of institutional traders is that there are specific price zones where they hit trigger prices, uh, where they uh, take profits, scale out, scale uh, in, and also uh, trail. So these the levels are going to help you in so many ways. We teach them in all our classes. And uh, have you ever asked, uh, you know, have you ever, you know, wonder, you know, where do these institutions leg in? So where are the locations? Are they doing technical or are they just buying randomly? No, they actually have algos that are set to do that. And of course, chart synchronicity and divergency. This is very important for the market because uh, sometimes the market has a leader and a laggard or a laggard and a leader. And sometimes they're all in sync. It's very easy to trade when all the indices are in sync, all the market uh, benchmarks are in sync. It's so super easy. You just, you know, fish and you catch the fish, you just, you know, uh, literally it's, it's super, super easy. But when the market is divergent and this week and also last week, we've noticed like a lot of divergency. We've noticed some relative weakness. We noticed some relative strength, right? So keep in mind that, you know, the Dow just closed above 40,000. So that is a huge deal. Uh, the Dow has been a laggard throughout this whole entire year and finally, Finally, it's getting its mojo and it was playing catch up. And it's not a surprise that it's playing catch up right after the um, ex right after the quadruple witch option expiration that was last month. But not only that, during the first half year, that's usually what they do. And keep in mind that this is an election year, guys. So election years are incredibly, incredibly bullish. And I have noted that as well in the video that I have uh done with uh, uh, my clients uh, back in January. In fact, I think it was like January 3rd or January 4th that we mentioned, and we were set up for a massively bullish uh, year. And all we had to do is pick some stocks. And this is actually today I'm going to reveal uh, some of the uh, stocks that I have picked and why I have picked these stocks as well. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's get into it. Uh, first of all, self-directed trading and investing, and I'm talking about swing trading or even day trading, if you, if, if you will, uh, is about taking control of your financial future and managing your own money without having to pay fees, without having to pay uh, commissions, without having to pay a bunch of you know, subscriptions, a bunch of, um, um, you know, a, a bunch of things that otherwise you would ne not have to pay. Uh, and nobody can do it better than you because it's your money. You care more about your money than anybody else. And uh, if you talk to a fund manager, you, you have no idea what he or she is going to invest in. So you're they're just pulling the money and they're selecting whatever they desire for your account. 
Uh, so basically, this is the first step that you can take to have your money working for you. So today's webinar is going to be, I want it to be like an eye opener of the forecast of what can happen. And what better way, because you already saw what happened from January to um, uh, to actually the end of June. Uh, and with that recording that I sent you guys, and please, if you have not uh, listen to tuned into uh, please listen to it because it's so uh, it's so important to see how I calculate the forecast and it's basically not me I'm not biased it's just what I am seeing in the market with simple technicals that's pretty much it uh, you don't have to be a math whiz and you don't definitely you don't need to have a, fi a finance degree for this now before we get started, I don't know how many of you guys know, but every year, like every year, stocks will move about 20 to 30%, maybe more. All right. So this is cool, right? So keep in mind that if you're invested with a fund, your return is going to be somewhere between six and 8% on an average. And what if I told you that you can have more than that? If you do your homework, if you have the right stock picks, you could have more than that. And I'm proof here and I'm going to show you my personal stat and I'm going to walk you through some of the trades that we have done this year. Okay, so every year stocks, just remember this, every year stock move 20 to 30 percent. And this happens every year. What if I told you that this amount, this percentage, the 20 to 30 percent happens within the same stock keep in mind within the same stock a couple of times per year in cycles and all you have to do is understand what the cycle is and where you need to enter because entries are very important you don't enter as the price is going down right you enter at the inflection point and i'm going to talk to you guys today about these inflection points so you learn how to do it yourself. All right, guys, this is the market for the first six months, okay? January through June. This is insane. Take a look at this. We have Microsoft 20% up. We have Apple almost 20% up. We have Oracle 30% up. We have Google 30% up. We have Meta, guys, 40% up. We have Broadcom 52% up. We have NVIDIA which is 160% up year to date. Like, remember the 20 to 30%? We are at the 20 and the 30% this year. Now, you have noticed probably that there has been a little bit of rotation, right? Money coming out of the tech. You saw the tech pull back. You saw Meta pull back. You saw, you know, most of Google pull back, Microsoft pull back they're at the inflection point right now and they're getting ready for the next segment and the next segment is going to be dictated by the earnings that are going to uh actually we have officially started earnings season uh last thursday we had delta that reported earnings and then on friday we had city we had wells fargo and we had jp morgan these banks kickstart earnings season Next week, we're, by the way, we're going to have Netflix that is going to report earnings. It's going to be the first tech company that is going to report. That's very interesting. And then we're going to get into the meat of things, right? So this is going to be so exciting because this is what moves the market. Not Typically, this is a news-driven market, and it has been a news-driven market since 2009. And that is because of the financial crisis that happened in 2008. And they had to come with some kind of monetary engineering to keep the uh to keep the market from crashing and they have and they actually came up with a quantitative easy and they pumped money into the market right now remember the market right the the stock market is not the market the market is way better than the economy right okay um okay so 
basically you can see here that in the first six months we have had tremendous growth in some of the stocks even costco costco is one of my favorite stocks and we're going to talk about it today we're going to talk about broadcom avgo we're going to talk about walmart we're going to talk about a lot of these stocks uh and don't forget even netflix and although you it may not seem that it had a pretty tremendous run this year because it had a very choppy market take a look at netflix right here uh it is 23% up. Now, take a look at Tesla, all right? Tesla is in the red, right? I mean, it's almost in the red. McDonald's is in the red. Starbucks is in the red. Nike's in the red. Boink is in the red. Now, I'm going to get you a little, uh, get you on a little secret. I never invest. I maybe swing trade, but typically I never invest in companies that are airlines, hotels, because anything can happen, right? If there is a hurricane or if there is, you know, any kind of major thing that is happening or if there's, God forbid, a plane, you know, you know how Boeing has had, you know, those issues, right? It's like, I don't know about you guys, but I'm literally afraid of of flying, right? Um, okay, so here's the half year performance. What was the leader, right? What was the leader? Because what we need to do is play the leaders, right? Uh, technology. Technology has the first place. And you saw from that chart that technology plays a major role and it's the driver for this uh, for the stock market. The second thing is we have communication services. Then we have financials. Financials were very strong and financials kept on being strong this year as a continuation from last year because last year they were uh, they were relatively strong as well. We have industrials, energy, consumer cyclical, utilities, consumer defensive, healthcare, and take a look, real estate last place, right? Real estate last place. So as, as a start, whenever you want to make your money work for you, you're going to look and see what worked in the market in the last three months, in the last six months. And if you see that technology has had a tremendous run, you're going to stick with technology. You're going to stick with communication services. You're going to stick with financials. And by the way, one of my favorite uh, two favorite actually, but I have an ultimate favorite, which is JP Morgan. I like to trade that uh, a lot. And I also like to trade uh, Goldman Sachs. These are my two financials, my go to, to go to. I also like to trade Bank of America, better price point, but there are so many other regional banks that you can trade as well and they have really good performance. All right. So with that being said, we're going to get right to business Um right here and we're going to go to straight to the market forecast does that sound fair guys okay okay cool all right thanks mary i appreciate it all right so here we are uh by the way this is i'm using um uh i'm using the software it's trend spider i love using it it has all the bells and whistles i set alerts on it and most importantly, when I'm on the go, I don't have to pop up my platform. So, um, you know, with uh, with my funds and everything and kind of like push a wrong button and buy something or sell something. So I love to use this. Uh, they have a great app. So anyways, uh, just telling you out there because I know I did have uh, some, some questions on what platform I'm using. I'm using Schwab. I'm using Think or Swim to trade on. I have been using it for a gazillion years, but I also analyze uh, based on. Um, I also analyze and I use this software that I that I like. Uh, anyway, so you can use anything you like, anything that resonates with you. This is what is in sync with me. All right. So because we're doing a forecast, I just wanted to go to a very high time frame that I think many of you guys don't actually know exist, right? And this is an yearly. Uh, uh, yearly chart. How many of you guys in here in type of one and tell me how many of you guys really have ever looked at an yearly chart? At an yearly chart, just type of one. How many of you guys have looked at an yearly chart? Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> All right. By the way, we're over 300, we are 367 people in here. Okay. So, yes, so from the answers that you guys are giving me, it shows that not many of you guys are using the yearly charts. Yearly charts are important. And the reason why is because they give you inflection points and they give you velocity. What velocity does, it actually has the power to move the price above or even below. It depends on whether bullish or bearish. 
but it has the power to blast the price. Have you ever wondered, you know, uh, you know, at times when the market is in a rut and it's not moving anywhere and it needs some kind of catalyst in order to move. And when it receives the catalyst, it's just blasting like the Dow did because it has the tradable void, right? It has the tradable void and it has reached the inflection point and it has reached the velocity zone. Now, can somebody tell me what the velocity zone is here or what the price of the velocity is here? Does anybody know that? And I'm going to give you the exact level where the velocity kicked in. And by the way, the velocity kicked in last year. Because remember, 2022, this, this whole year, and for those of you that are very new, because I could see here that, you know, not a lot of you use the early charts. By the way, one bar represents one year of trading activity. One year of trading activity. This was 2022. Everybody knew, like, yeah, it's a pullback. What did all the major outlets were telling you? Oh, my gosh, we're going into recession. Remember, the stock market uh, is not the economy, right? So we're going into recession. They were looking at this pull. This is, this is so insignificant. You guys can see it right here. This is so insignificant. Like, really? Oops, sorry. All right. This is so insignificant because... If you look at it, this is a 10 exponential moving average. You could substitute the 10 exponential. I use it for day trading. I use it for swing trading as well. You could actually substitute this with an eight simple moving average if you don't want to use an exponential. It's pretty much very, very similar. But the reality, what you have here is a super trend. A super trend is defined by price action that is sitting above the 10 exponential moving average and it's never violating it. Or even if it violates it, it just taps a little bit below it, and then it zips back up and it closes the buff, right? So you need to wait for that close. All right, so I'm gonna show you where the velocity came, right? The velocity came last year, towards the end of the year, when the price action in the queues traded for the first time above $402.28. And why is that? This is called a sandwich, guys. For those of you that don't know, or this is, this is a sandwich. This is also called a 180 reversal, all right? And this happens when this green candle takes out the prior high. Now, if you guys are wondering what a sandwich is, right? And how does this form? A sandwich is formed in super dominant trends. When you're having a super dominant trends, it means that you're having, let's say, a very bullish, like in this case, you're having a very, very bullish uh, momentum in the market. What? And by the way, these charts can happen on... One minute chart, five minute charts, 15 minutes. We often trade them in the trading room for day trading, not necessarily for swing trading. Swing trading, they're incredibly powerful in investing. They are mind blowing, okay? And they can help you take massive decisions into your investing account. Yeah, remember the account where you do nothing, okay? <laughs> All right, so this is basically the inflection point right here. As the bulls were running, like they're running, Imagine yourself running, like, of course, I I'm not a runner. No, I I trade. <laughs> I'm not a runner. But anyways, I do other things for fun and for, uh, for sports. I walk, I swim, I play tennis, I play golf, but I'm not a runner. I've never been. I, I don't know if I can take running right now. Never late. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it is too late. I don't know. So here's the thing. When you're a runner, you go like, you run, you run for three miles, let's say, and you go like, I got to slow down the pace a little bit. Am I right? I got to slow down. You feel your, and especially if you're not trained, right? You feel tired. So you are not going to stop, but you're going to slow down. Or at one point you're going to take a breather and go like, <sighs> right? You're going to catch your breath. This is what a sandwich is. So the bulls are running, boom, 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 boom. They're going up, 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 up. And all of a sudden they go like, oh my God, I got to catch my breath, right? So when the bulls are catching their breath, the bears are coming in and they're creating a pullback, right? This is, this is exactly, this is that momentum, right? This is that momentum, that moment in time where you're stopping or you're pausing or you're slowing down and somebody else is stepping in and pulling back a little bit. These are the bears. But you know that you have to achieve a target, right? So what you do is you get back out there after the rest 
and you start running again. And here it is. Okay. Now there are two inflection points right here. First of all, this is the velocity point where this shows continuation. Whenever you see this pattern, and what I do recommend, if you can capture the screen right now, just take a snapshot, print it, make it like a huge poster, put it on the wall. And whenever you see this pattern, just freaking trade it. Okay. Whatever you're trading, whether it's stocks or options or whatever it is, cryptos, I don't care. Okay. So you trade this Forex, whatever it is. When the green candle takes out the prior red high, and when the prior candle from the red is green, this is a freaking sandwich, okay? Sandwich, sandwich, sandwich. These are phenomenal. Is there any specific parameters for the red candle? Absolutely none. So typically, typically, this candle should not have been this wide, this, this, this long, okay? It should have been within inside the green candle, but it's fine if it's like this. OK, for example, if you have this setup and it's on a five minute chart, you place your entry, you place your stop below the red candle. Bam. Instant strategy. This is phenomenal what you're getting. OK, this is phenomenal. Guys, this strategy is worth millions of dollars, millions of dollars, literally. And by the way, institutions love this and institutions have designed algorithms to work on this pattern. Okay, it's a simple pattern. It's super simple. Uh, this is considered a super trend. Exactly. This is a super trend because it's above the 10 exponential moving average. It's not violating. <laughs> you call that a bullish hot dog. I love it. I, I don't care what you call it. Just memorize it and bam. This is why I spent so much time here because Trading is visual memory. That's what it is. You remember patterns that work in the market. Okay. All right. So let's get going. So, oh my gosh, it's 10 30 already. I don't want to keep you guys all day here. Okay. But how cool is this? You guys, do you guys see how cool this is? Like, bam, sandwich moving higher. Okay. So this is, this should, if you're investing, this should have been your entry right here 402.28. Okay. Just above this candle high. You don't buy it at the exact high. You don't buy it at the exact high. So you don't really buy it at 402.28. You buy it above 402.28. Does anybody know why you need to do that? Does anybody know why you need to do that? Simple reason. Because you want to make the price confirm that it's ready to take out those bears. Confirmation. You got it. You need that confirmation. This is what confirmation is all about. Exactly. All right, so there's another level right here. We close the year, right? We close the year and we have a brand new high. This is 412.92, 412.92. So first off, we kick off with a sandwich and we know that this is the first velocity spot and we have a second velocity spot above the green kennel high. Did you guys, I have a, fr I ha I have a friend and what he would do, and this was back in um, 1996, 1998, up to 2000. So he would go to work. And what he would do is he would call his broker and he would say, you know, buy this stock for me. Okay. Buy this stock for me. And uh, he would uh, get it early in the morning. And guess what? He would call the broker at the end of the day and he would exit because everything was going up, right? Everything was going up. <laughs> that came the bubble. All right. What time frame is correct for the sandwich formation? The best sandwich formations are happening from the two minute, uh, I'm sorry, from the five minute all the way to the yearly. So whether it's the five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour, four hour, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, quarterly, and yearly. These quarterly and yearly yearlies are designed for investing, are designed for massive breakouts, okay? And if you view the video, we covered, uh, it, we've covered we covered Broadcom AVGO that we're going to tap into it today because I'm loaded in that AVGO and I love it. All right, so let's talk about forecast. How high can 
uh, can the cues go, can NASDAQ go on any instrument on the planet, any chart, on any, any chart, whether you're trading Forex futures, uh, stocks, ETFs, whatever it is, cryptos, whatever it is. If there's an instrument, CFDs, whatever it is. Okay, so let's find out. So we know we've learned about velocity, right? So we know we have velocity here. Okay, good. Now we go to the quarterly. What do we have on the quarterly? Could there have been a better entry? Of course, of course. The better entry, and by the way, can somebody tell me if this is an uptrend or a downtrend or what kind of trend do we have here? Type of one for uptrend, uh, two for downtrend. Perfect. All right. Awesome. This is an uptrend. So you can see here as scary as that 2020, uh, 2022 was like, it was just a pullback to the 20 simple moving average. Now, remember, the 10 EMA is the super trend, right? The super power trend. And then you're having the 20 SMA as the trend, right? And then you're having the 50 SMA as a healthier trend. In a news-driven market, rarely do you see any asset pulled back to the 50 SMA on a quarterly or a yearly, okay? Rarely do you see that. Let me go back here. Okay. Uh, we don't even have it on the, yeah, I can't show you on this one. But if you go to a um, Schwab a chart, a chart, you can definitely see that. Okay, so now we have these two inflection points that if we are investors, okay, we know that that is the velocity zone and we know that those are going to be massive breakout points. But you go like, hey, I don't want to wait to 402 or 412, right? So what do you do? You wait for a buy setup. You wait for a daily rotation. So you wait for a pullback either to the 10 EMA. And in this case, you could see here that this candle closed below the 10 EMA, right? So this candle closed below the 10 EMA. So it's a bearish candle that just broke the super power trend. And then the price went up a little bit and then gave it all, uh, gave it all back and actually made a new low here. And then it opened, made a new low, made a new high, and then it settled over here. What do you notice here? Big size candle, wide range bar here as well, wide range bar, and then all of a sudden, smaller bar. Do you guys know that the biggest actions in the market are not coming from big bars, from velocity bars, from, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, volatility bars? No, they come from smaller, narrower bars. That's what it is. Smaller, narrower bars. You're never going to see a big action take off off of this one right? Any rotation or any down move, right? Wide range candles are sit on, our, sit on your hands candle. You have probably 7,000 other stocks that you can look at and analyze why you don't have to trade this. You don't have to trade something that is wide. And I'm talking about all time frames, whether you're day trading, swing trading, or investing. What do we notice here? This is the doji candle and the doji candle landed, tapped into the 20 SMA. So what do we have here? Does anybody know what a doji does? What a doji represents? It represents indecision. It's indecision. So basically everybody's confused at this point because they don't know what to do. Sellers don't feel like selling anymore. Buyers don't feel like, you know, tapping into it because they, they have a lot of uncertainty. But their indecision is our decision. Because when you see a doji candle right here, you're going to go, it's going to go bullish above and, or it's going to be bullish, uh, uh, bearish below. So it's bullish above or bearish below. These are gold mines. So whenever you see this doji, especially after a three or four bar pullback, this is the benchmark. So you need to see three or five bars within three and five bars. Yes, you, there, there are some other numbers out there for steeper pullbacks like eight and whatever. But this is when you're actively trading. Typically, you need to see three to five bars. And by the way, I didn't invent this. It's a Fibonacci number. Three consecutive days, rotation. Five consecutive days, rotation. Or four consecutive days and rotation. And this was the buy point, early buy point. We, I trade out loud, we're all over this setup. 
we traded this. I actually added because I have, uh, I have been in the queue since 2016. I think it was March 2016. And this is where I've added right here. Okay. And here is, and that's in my investing account. And this is the stop. So you're using, so see how helpful this is because you know that this represents an entry point. So this red candle, when it takes out this 296.88 level, it's going to be a buy point. And you know exactly where your stop is going to be. You're not going to go like, oh, but I wonder where my stop is going to be. Am I going to use a stop? Am I not going to use a stop? Here's your answer. Okay, bullish above, bearish below. Because if the price would have triggered, for example, let me see where my, uh, hold on just one second. And, okay. Okay, here it is. Because if it would have triggered, and then if we would have had a bar that went like this, right? What would have happened? Do you guys know? Well, first of all, we would have violated this point right here. And then because the bar would have a very strong close, this would have been imminent crash, okay? So now you know how to determine crashes and how to determine upside, okay? So because this candle closed here at the very high, what happened? Does anybody know what happened? Okay, oh, well, here is another inflection point. The green candle trading above the prior candle high zipped back up. Here's another step. Exactly, Frank, exactly. Green candle taking, uh, I'm sorry, this candle, This you see this red candle taking out the prior, uh, the prior bar high? This is another inflection point, okay? And then it zipped back up. See how it touched down into the 10 EMA and it zipped back up? Why do you think it touched down here, okay? It needed a breather, plus it had some resistance from this side right here. Why? Oh, I can't move this. Okay, because this is bullish above and this is bearish below. That's why you're seeing the tail here. Oops, I hate this cursor. Okay, let me see this one. No. Okay, here it is. Right here. That's why the bottoming tails are. Okay, and then it's the backup. So this is the idea. So let's get back to our theme of forecasting, right? Okay, let me just uh, get rid of the, the scribbles right here and we're ready to go. Is this educational, guys? And by the way, if you have questions, feel free to ask. I wanted this to be more of a workshop, like no slides, just, you know, work on charts. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. So now we know that this represents a buy point. This represents the stop point. This represents a massive ad area. You don't sell into resistance. Forget about that. You don't sell into resistance. You wait into resistance. Okay. Just like you don't buy at support. <laughs> okay. You wait for a clear signal. Like I would not buy here at this 20 SMA. Why? Because this is the last shelf of defense for the price and the price could actually go down from here okay um mike in this example uh chart would the index have gone negative in 2021 uh so would that have been a sell signal in 2021 Th this was a sell signal okay this was a sell signal right here okay so this is the first quarter of 2022 this was the first sell signal but careful, careful, because if you're, um, uh, th this is an uptrend. So this is a pullback. It's not a sell signal to start shorting. This was so, uh, this was a lot, you know, th that's why there was a lot of confusion. And that's why you see that the price went down and zipped back up because it was above the 10 EMA. This was actually the sell signal, the, the, let's say the shorting signal right here. And it was from here let me just bracket it. It was actually from here to here. Okay. It was actually from here to here. This would have been the, uh, this would have been the sell. So we had a very late sell signal where the market could have, could have, um, you know, probably collapsed, but as long as the price is, you know, holding above the, uh, 20 SMA, no sell signals. 
In fact, I didn't sell anything, any of my assets. I didn't sell anything through uh, 2022 and I have added a whole bunch right here and I have doubled up. So I had double the profits when I got back into the highs. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's get these out and let's start forecasting for 2024. Let's see where, where are the cues going to go there? I thought it was so important that, you know, we go through this. So you understand what I'm looking at. So I hope this helps Mike. All right. So now what I do uh, and I do this typically on quarterly charts and I also do it on monthly charts, uh, but typically I do it on quarterly charts. And one other thing before we actually get into forecasting, what I want you to uh, get into the habit of doing is look at these charts on a quarterly basis at the end of the quarter and analyze them. OK, that's what I do. It only takes like a day, a couple of hours to sit with your favorite stocks. Uh, or the stocks that are in play, I like to call them my hot picks, and uh, kind of like do a little forecasting, right? Because take a look at what's, what happened here. I'm just going to give you this last example before we move forward with forecasting. So take a look at this example right here. So we have this candle that closed right, right here. I'm just going to put this line here. So this is last quarter. This is the month of June. So now what you can see is that we're at, we actually stepped into the continuation, right? So you can see that the price trading over 487 and 20 cents. And now we're going to go like, okay, now I know that it's going, it's going to go higher. Where's it going to go? Okay. So this is what I do is I use Fibonacci's. So I point the high, the prior high, you see what I'm doing? So I'm not doing retracements. I'm doing projections. Because if I wanted to a re a retracements differently set, right? So when I do projections, I in a in an uptrend, you always connect the high point to the low point, right? And you try to connect the pivots. You cannot use Fibonacci's, you know, in ongoing price action. So I cannot use Fibonacci's here into this high. I need to have a pivot. If you don't have a pivot, then you can't use Fibonacci's. So that is a different topic how to draw trace to Fibonacci's correctly. So anyway, so let's take this out. So we don't have any, oh, I, okay, never mind. I'll do it again. Here it is. Okay. So as you can see here from this chart, we are right exactly into resistance. And you actually saw that we had a bit of divergency into the market. And you're probably wondering, why is this happening? Was it because Powell was speaking? Was it because of the CPI numbers? Was it because of the PPI numbers? Trust me, when you're thinking about algos, about uh, project, you know, market direction and all that stuff, these things are just, they represent noise in the market. They're, they're the noise in the market. You want to step outside of the noise. And the noise is not going to impact a quarterly chart or a monthly chart or even a yearly chart. OK, so it's not going to impact that. All right. So now we know that we have achieved target. One of the targets, which is at 500, 504, actually the exact price. And you can see here that we had we have a high of 503.52. OK, so see that wall of resistance here that otherwise you would not see it because it's trading into all time highs. Right. Remember that institutions love to have targets. And they set targets. Uh, 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 they set targets using these projections, right? Because they want a measured move. They want to see, like, okay, if I get in here, where can it go? And why do you think they do that? They do that because other institutions are using the same mechanism to determine the targets for assets that are hitting all-time highs. Okay, and as they represent the majority of money uh, that. Are, are invested into the market, we need to listen to them, right? We just follow directions. Now, we're talking about 2024 year end. This is where the market is going. It's going to 600. Why 600? It's a psychological number. Remember, the market is very, very, very uh, attracted to these psychological levels. And it's normal because if I go right now at Best Buy and if I look at an iPad and if it's, I don't know, $489.99 and if I buy it, 
then I come home with it and I don't know, my friends see it and go like, oh my gosh, such a cool iPad. How much did you pay for it? I'm going like 500 bucks, right? I'm not going to go the exact number, right? So the market, let's say if, uh, let's say if it's going to have a projection just hypothetically at $593 and 32 cents, nobody's going to say that level. Everybody's going to go for the 600. Yeah, we're shooting for 600. So pay very close attention to these whole numbers. There are some stocks that really have a bigger attraction to the whole numbers and especially ETFs. So when you're trading the SPY, the Qs, Russell, when you're trading up any ETF on the planet, uh, these, they are, um, uh, they have a really huge impact at the whole number zone. And of course you will consider the projection all the way to 658 and 61 cents, which we have right here. This is the ultimate, ultimate. I like to go from whole numbers. So for example, at this level, I would consider $650. So remember that this year, let me, uh, let me determine where this year uh, started. It was right here. So we ran from here to here. Now we have another six months. It would be appropriate to have a measured move into 600. And maybe if we gain velocity, we're going to go into the 650, right? So this is my projection. And it's not even my projection, okay? It's what the Fib it's the Fibonacci projection uh, for 2024 for, uh, for the Qs. So this is the level that we're shooting for. Now, should the market go ballistic or are there going to be other levels that we're heading into 2025? Yeah, we do. We have the 900, guys. We have the 900 level. So you can see here that you can trade and you can say, oh my gosh, it's going to go to the moon. Well, if you have a measured move to the moon, yeah, because this is actually how technicals work. And they're super simple to do. So I want you guys to practice with it. Okay, this is super, super cool. All right. All right, so uh, how about the 38 and the 50% FIB for projection? Oh, you mean here? Oh, these represented target zones, right? So if you uh, if you get in here, for example, like I did, uh, and that was in the first quarter of 2023, as the price was trading above this doji, these areas will represent target zones as, uh, as the price is ongoing higher. 50% uh, that you guys see here, which is here, let me just zoom it up a little bit. You guys see it right here where my cursor is. It's not even um, it's not even a FIB number. So 50% is a measured move from the pr prior swing high to the swing low. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Uh, all right, so this is what I use. This is what I use. I don't use other uh, projections. And the most important thing is to use what institutions are using. So this is, from the institutional standpoint, this is what I have used and what other institutions are using as well. I'm not aware of others that are using other levels, but you could definitely see if they have an impact. Like, you could see if they, ha if they have an impact, for sure. Okay? So I hope that helps. Okay, so let's take a look right now at the spies. Now that we have determined, oh, let's take this out because I wanted to trace it with you guys, right? Okay, ongoing trend. We're going to go here to the yearly as well, right? What do you guys see here? Do you guys see something super cool? All right, you see that yearly velocity. So please, if you have not analyzed yearly charts until now or quarterly charts, this is where you're getting your peace of mind. Because this is where you have the confidence to say, yeah, the price action is literally going to go higher because there's so much uh, price compression is just going to blast off. And this is the blast off. Take a look how powerful the spies are right here, right? They went from 479 to 559.99 uh, as of, uh, as of um, uh, yesterday, right? So this, this is impressive. Now, we're going to go to the quarterly charts. And you can see here, this is the prior high from when the market started to pull back. So what we want to find out here is where's the price going to go? Like, is it going to, does it have a room for higher price action? So as you can see from the case of the Qs, the spies are also into an inflection point right here because they, uh, they are at $561, right? And you can see that we tapped into that because uh, the price actually went to uh, $563.67. This is the ultimate high that we have right here. It has achieved resistance. OK, so it has achieved target and oftentimes institutions, when they uh, are seeing these specific targets, they scale out a little bit 
And that's what you've noticed that they have scaled down. And if the momentum continues, they're actually adding back in. Let's not forget what happened right here. This is a daily chart. So I went to the daily to see what happened. It hit that resistance that we had the Fib on. You guys see it? You guys see it? And once the price action on the quarterly hit this resistance, the daily reacted and it pulled, pulled the price back down. So they have algos that are set to sell partial profits from that, okay? And now we're going back to the quarterly and now we wanna find out if the price is gonna digest this resistance because remember the price needs to digest this resistance and we're gonna talk about that daily chart and the weekly chart to see if we have momentum for next week and what the plan is for next week, right? Okay, now that we start earning season. Of course I'll do SPX if you want, okay? Um, uh, I like Fabos, uh, Fabos, but up there are different. Oh, could you recommend a source? No, this, this just, this is Fibonacci retracement. You're using the Fibonacci retracement. That's it. That's it. Don't overcomplicate it. <clears throat> the more you overcomplicate things, the more you're going to go like, oh my God, I'm confused. I don't know. Just use very simple indicators. That's it. And the key is to use very few of them or none. Okay. All right. So how high can we go in the spies, guys? How high can we go in the spies? Well, we have the $600 and we have the 693 right here, 693. So we have room to go, room to go. Remember, this is just a whole number. And then we have almost 700. So we're shooting for 600 and 700 as we're going into the end of 2024 uh, and beginning of 2025. Okay. Sounds good. Now, I promise you guys that we're going to take a look at SPIs and we're going to try to determine what the price action is likely to do on Monday, right? On Monday. So as you can see here, the famous sandwich, I don't know who's hungry, but the famous sandwich, guys, you can see the sandwich right here, right? So we're going to bracket it like so, okay? And we're going to go do what? Just... Print this bullish above, above, all right, and we're going to go, and if it's bullish above, this, this uh, is going to be your stop, the 10 EMA is going to be your stop just below, uh, just below uh, this candle low right here, the Friday candle low, and this is going to be bearish below, ta-da, so now we know that if the price action should be violating the 555 below the 555, right? Uh, there's a very strong chance that it may start a pullback. Strong chance that it may start a pullback. But caution, you have this prior high right here. You guys see it? Okay. You have this prior high and this high from the base. You can see what happened here. The price came into the 10 EMA. Stayed here for a very, very long time, and then it tried to rotate here, and it challenged a prior high, but it was very shortly lived because the price came back down, retested the 10 EMA. Now, notice that it held the base here nicely, and then it came back in here, tested, and then it started to fly, okay? So it needed some digestion time right here, but it's still very ongoing trend. I typically don't like to short ongoing trend even though it's bearish it's signaling that this could be a market pullback but i don't short ongoing trends if i want to short something i go, I short disney or i short something that is weak i'm not going to short so see the difference here between spies uh, between a possible short in here right and let's take a look at disney like yeah i'll short this right because it's below the ma's uh it uh let's see what kind of support does it have see even disney here it does have, take a look at the support, right? It has the uh, prior resistance high and it has support right here. So it really needs to get below 95, but below 95 short with both hands. Short it. <laughs> okay, short it. I'm going to short it if it goes below 95. All right, but other than that, I'm going to sit on my hands. So we're going to get back here into the spies, right? And bearish below means that there is an incident of a pullback. It's not that I'm going to short it. I'm not going to short spies, right? Uh, I need to have a confirmation to short. And a confirmation is a downtrend confirmation. A downtrend confirmation to be very aggressive, I would short it if I have a high 
two lower highs and two lower lows at least on a four hour chart. And that's when I would short below the second pivot low, right? So I need to have the high, lower high and the second lower high, right? So that is when I would short. I'm not gonna short it now. So I need a lot of proof in order to short. Other than that, I'm gonna stay bullish. I'm gonna wait for another opportunity to get in long. So this is a buy over uh, 563 and uh, 61 cents. Place the stop below this uh, bearish below level and look for higher, okay? Look for higher. Uh, we talked about the extensions, uh, ongoing, and of course you can use fibs and you can use projections on the daily, but we're look, we're actually, our discussion today is about forecasting uh, for the rest of 2024. And we have a special request here for SPX, okay? That we're gonna do the same thing. All right, we're gonna go to the quarterly. Oh, in fact, you can see that, yeah, I'm already, I'm already ahead, right? Because I, I analyze all of these uh, uh, indices and, all right, so high, low, and it's into an inflection point right here, 56.52. 6,000 is the next one. Of course, it's gonna go like 57, 58. All these whole numbers are gonna have a huge impact on price. But ultimately, 6,000, and it has void to go, oh my goodness, into 7,000. That, that's pretty incredible, right? So 6,000 and 7,000. So it has this tradable void right here. Uh, and this is SPX. Let's take a look at the Dow because the Dow has been uh, sluggish. And I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm. Let me show you a weekly chart. OK, let me show you a weekly chart. This is a little bit more relevant. So you can see here that since creating this high in March, the price action has gone anywhere. So it has created definite resistance into the 400 level and into the 375, let's say. Right. So it has been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So what this means is that if it takes out these highs, right, it's going to start taking off. But while Nasdaq was making new highs, while um, S&P was making new highs, uh, the diamonds were not. They were very sluggish. So we're going to go to the quarterly chart and we're going to find out. Oh, my goodness. What do we have here? Guys, type it in the room. Tell me what we have here. Tell me what it have. Tell me what you have here. A Sammy. <laughs> a Sammy. Guys, this is a sandwich, right? This is a sandwich. So diamonds just received velocity at 401. So what does this mean? It means that they're poised of shooting higher, right? They're poised of shooting higher. And the projections for 2024 for the rest of 2024 they're going to have a first target into 420 and they're going to have another target into 500 that's pretty cool that's pretty cool all right so we have velocity here so these are the projections for the diamonds and uh let's go a little bit into monday to see what's happening on monday you can see that we had a peak, we have a peekaboo high. And then towards the end of the session, in the second half of the session, we started the pullback, right? So we that's why this topping tail was created. Because if you look like on a smaller time frame, let's say, I don't know, on a 15 minute, you can see that we have some selling going on, right? So the Dow gave a little bit of profits back. And that's on a 15 minute level. So you will understand what happened on a smaller time frame. So they started pulling back. So this is a, uh, this is a peekaboo high. This is what it's called a peekaboo high. Okay, or a periscope high. What that means is that the buyers pushed it over resistance and now they're looking left and right, left and right to see if we have any kind of momentum going on. Now, because we have here a new fresh pivot, we want to find out, are there any other extensions from the daily, from the weekly that we can take into consideration? So what we do is we go down here and we calculate this. OK, we calculate this to find out immediate targets, not necessarily the quarterly ones, because if I want to swing trade it, for example, I want to see does it have room to go and what are the next resistance points. So I have the resistance point here. This is the first extension. OK, this is the first extension that we have into the four hundred and six dollars. And this is the following one at one uh, one point six one eight. OK, one point six one eight. So now, remember, nothing goes straight up. 
So because this is a daily chart, you can expect the price to go here into the 405, 406, and then probably pull back a little bit and then swing up back high. OK, because the price action is moving in sequences and segments. All right. Does that make sense? All right. One other thing we have IWM. OK, right here we have IWM that started to shoot finally higher before. So for you guys to understand IWM and where it's coming from, I need to extend this chart a little bit. OK, I'm going to extend this chart because this requires a little bit more work. So you understand where it's coming from. All right. So as you can see here, we have a prior high in 2018. This sort of started in 2018. That is where the um, uh, poor momentum has started to uh, uh, literally impact uh, IWM. So in 2018, right here, 2018, September, uh, August and September 2018, we created this line in the sand, right? We created this resistance, right? You can see here that in March of 2020, we were back here. Then this is actually before the pandemic, before the black swan hit, right? And the price went down, like you can see here, it went down. And this resistance right here developed into massive support, right? You can see it right here. Okay, so we have two inflection points here. We have the first pivot high. We have the second pivot high that created that rough resistance. And we knew that if the price is going to get above this resistance, the price is going to be capable of moving higher. Now, what's really interesting here that from the monthly chart, we never had a downtrend. So Russell has been in a constant uptrend, especially on this monthly chart, right, that you see here. Now, in 2020, when everything recovered, right, and you can see that the price was able to manage and literally take out these two prior highs. And these were the most, the roughest to take out, right? But they left some memory. They left some residue there. And when the price went up and when the pullback, and this is the 2022, and when the price action pulled back, what happened? We developed a hefty base here right? We developed a very hefty base. And this was because of these two prior highs. These two prior highs rejected the price, made the price go lower, and it made it very hard for the price to go up. But finally, when it went up, it started to shoot up. And then when the price came down, this is called minor support. And minor support is my favorite level of support because this support is only developed in strong uptrends. And once you know this, you like, you know, you know how to buy early because this is why the price, as you can see here, right? The price never went below this minor support zone. This minor support was developed by these prior highs. And this is literally an ongoing uptrend. All right, because minor support only develops in strong uptrends. There's no doubt about it. So once you learn technicals, you're good to go for life. Okay, so what do we have here? Okay, we have another resistance high, which is into the 200, let's say 230 to $240, right into this tail right here. So we're halfway there, like we're halfway there. And as you can see here, going to zoom it in a little bit. And as you can see here, we just managed this month to blast above the prior resistance highs that were from March, that were from April, and we're finally starting to move a little bit higher. Now, there's another problem that perhaps, you know, not a lot of people are showing you, right? But you see these lows right here? OK, these lows, these bottoming tails that you guys see here are going to create lots of issues into this segment. Now, oftentimes, if you have a consolidation price compression for a relatively longer period of time, this would digest these lows. But you can see here that the price action has tried to hold above this 10 EMA right here to hold it so super strong right? So super strong above it. And you can see every single time when it down, it created a bottoming tail. When down, it was bought. 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 And every single time, see the periscope high right here before 
the price action started to come in. And of course, it was in sync with the whole market because it was 2022 and the market was pulling back. You don't need a reason to. It was technical. It was a technical pullback. It was nothing more. So now if the price action is going to digest this high right here, because you can see that it has dug a little bit into these tails because before that it was actually trading below the tails. And this congestion that has happened here since March till now is proven to start working and heading toward the 234 and 200, whatever this high is here, the uh, 230, okay? Two, uh, I'm sorry, 244 uh, and 46 cents, 244 and 46 cents. So remember, these are monthly charts, okay? So this is the price action. And once you understand this, take a picture of this, right? So you understand where it's going because, and, and again, a very important thing is we need to look at how we close on a little bit smaller time frames. So for example, on the weekly, and once we have a close, a strong close on the weekly, let me just zoom it in a little bit so you guys can see it. Look at these tails, the same tails that I've shown you, right? Take a look at these tails, right? They're right there. So we are now into this chunky, chunky resistance, that residue, that price action residue, right? That was developed here between 2021 and 2022. So a whole year of chop, right? All right, so what I could say is that if the price action on Monday is gonna take out the 215, so it needs to take out the 215, we're gonna start entering into this chop right here. And we could start, We could. it's not gonna be easy, it's gonna be super tough, right? And we don't even know. The one thing that it has in its favor, and that is since January, is that the price in the uh, in Russell has not gone below the 200 SMA onto the weekly chart. This is very, very important. So basically, this is going to be baby steps. It's going to be a week by week basis. If next week we're going to start trading above 215, the support zone is still below the 200 SMA we may have a chance of continuing higher, but the first target is going to be into the 433. And I think you understand why, because we have these prior highs right here, right? Okay. So, uh, the, so once we, once we start taking out these highs, the $430, then we have a clean shot to $240 and ultimately to 244. But what's going to happen? Uh, what's going to, and usually one other thing that I wanted to mention, Russell has the tendency to move into the end of the year. Remember what happened? Let me just go back here. All right. Let me go back here. All right. This is, uh, this is November. Where's November? This is November. This is November. Remember Trump's policies? Now, I'm not talking about politics here, but Trump policies with lowering the taxes and all that stuff made Russell blast. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, because it helped Russell a lot, okay? It helped Russell a lot. And of course the pandemic came and anyways, 2020. So this is, so keep in mind, keep in mind that this is an election year as well. And if, let's say, if, let's say if Trump wins, Russell may have a, better chance of moving higher, okay? And I'm just talking about Russell. I'm not talking about other indices. I'm just talking about policies and charts. What happened? Economy. I'm just talking about the economy. So basically here, we have a pretty good chance of advancing. And Russell also, and this is historically, has the tendency to move into the end of the year, okay? So pay very close attention to this trajectory in November and December because November and December is the time when Russell starts moving, okay? So if you're thinking long-term or if you're thinking swing, take a note of that, place it in your planner, agenda, wherever, put a post-it to look at the price then. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention here is that what happens if we achieve this high of the 244 and change? What do we do? Does it have energy to move higher? I mean, look at the massive uptrend, right? Look at the math. And I know it's choppy, but it's an uptrend. It's gorgeous, right? And we're going to take a look and see where it can go. 
and if it has additional resistance. Okay, so you can see that from these projections, we already have some resistance here. Now, notice that in the other indices that we have analyzed, we have noticed that, you know, the price action is trading above all time highs, blah, 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 it was running into extensions. Now here, you can see here that you, you see this yellow line. This is actually like the, the core. This is the core. This is where magic happens. And if the price action is into the core and starts blasting above this core, it's going higher. And if it's blasting below the core, below the yellow, it's moving lower. OK, so basically right now, the, uh, the Russell is poised for a continuation into the uh, two hundred seventy seven dollars and eighty uh, eighty cents. So let's say two hundred twenty seven dollars. This is the first resistance from the projection. Right. So before we hit these uh, highs right here of two thirty three that we have uh, determined by price action. Right. So this is price action resistance. This is fib resistance. And then we have this high, which is obviously you guys know it at two hundred forty four dollars, two hundred forty five dollars. And then if we escape that level we're going to 268 and 296 okay yeah we do have room for higher <laughs> we do have room for higher uh ultimately it's gonna get there ultimately it's gonna get there in years i don't know in years it's taking some years but it's gonna get there all right so now what i did have prepared for you guys is something super cool again uh my 10 favorite stocks and then a bonus. Okay. So I'm going to start with my favorite, which is Broadcom. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So this is Broadcom right here. This is the daily. Okay. And then as you know, Broadcom uh, did a stock split and it actually took effect the last day where you could buy it at $1,700. And in fact, you could see that that's why it's been hovering into the whole number into the $1,700 because of the stock split. So what happened is that for uh, for each, let's say if you have 10 shares, you would have 100 shares on Monday. OK, so Monday is going to trade at the new price. So it's going to be one hundred seventy dollars and 40 cents instead of one thousand seven hundred. OK, so if you had 10 shares of Broadcom, now you're going to have 100 shares. OK, because it's split 10 to one. All right, so Broadcom is actually one of my favorite stocks and it was my favorite stock for this year. And I'm gonna show you the quarterly chart, uh, no, the yearly chart first, okay? Because the first time that I legged in to uh, Broadcom was right here at $672 in my investing uh, portfolio because of the sandwich, right? And this was 2022, it had the smallest retracement, smallest, smallest, smallest retracement. And as you can see, here's the blast off, continuation higher. And then depending on how we close uh, this year, we may have a continuation into next year. So for me, this is a very long-term hold. I also have added to it because I swing trade. So I have several accounts. I have um, three investing accounts and I have four swing trading accounts. And I have different groups of assets that I trade in uh, in each account. You don't have to do that. But if you have an account and day trade and swing trade and invest into the same account, it's not healthy. My recommendation is to separate them. Have your investing account separate, your swing separate, and your day trading separate. Um, uh, regarding Broadcom, don't stocks usually trade run up to split, then lower it? You know what? Take a look at some other stocks that have split. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah, look at NVIDIA. Yeah. Or um, some other stocks that have split. It's not a rule. Yeah. Doesn't it scare me? No, it doesn't. It doesn't because it's a value stock. It's a value. I'm not, uh, and I'm not buying Broadcom, let's say for three days or for a week. I'm buying Broadcom for years. So I bought it at 672 the first time. And by the way, quick secret. Um, when, when I decided to go on my own and create income through day trading, and that was in 2003, uh, I went into stock day trading, okay? So I went from the investing field to the day trading field. It was wild, it was wild. But the thing here is that I would trade a lot Broadcom and I would day trade it. So you can day trade it, swing trade it. It all depends on your time frame. I'm not worried at all about any kind of pullback. 
especially this is a semiconductor. This is incredibly strong. So the yearly, this is the yearly. You can see here it has velocity. This was the inflection point. Bam, velocity zone and higher. The quarterly chart, take a look at the quarterly chart. And by the way, look, this is the um I, I didn't I didn't buy it here, unfortunately, because I didn't see it. Okay, so I missed the boat on this one in 2022. But you can see here that as the price, you know, was going lower and lower and lower in 2022 in the overall market, this Broadcom was holding like a champ. Uh, and you can see here that it has a massive trajectory higher. Okay. And this is the monthly chart. Let me just take this off. All right. This is the monthly chart right here. And the monthly chart, we still have about what, two weeks left? How much? Yeah, we have two and a half weeks left. And if we are not going to make a new high and we're, we're going to have an inside bar, guess what's going to happen? It's going to be bullish above or the pullback is going to start whenever. But remember, you need to wait for this uh, month to close. So we have two and a half weeks. A lot can happen here because remember, we have earnings season, right? What do you think Broadcom is going to what do you think the earnings are going to be in Broadcom? I can tell you right now, I don't even need to know they're going to be stellar. OK. All right. And this is the monthly monthly chart. This is where I call the trade. I'm going to show you the performance portfolio in a second. Uh, this is this is actually the ad right here at 16, uh, 1661. Just remember this level. I'm going to show you uh, our performance portfolio where we uh, went in. And this is the ad point uh, for the swing purpose. The first target is going to be here into the 1855. And because this is the weekly and of course the monthly uh, we're looking for smaller projections here. Like I said, for investment, I really don't care because I have a really wide time horizon, so I could care less what it does and, you know, but, uh, for the swing purpose, uh, I'm looking at this. Okay. And you're going to see the targets that are set up here. Okay. Let's go like this. All right. And these are the immediate targets. So it has some resistance here and you can see that uh, it closed in a doji because of the stock split. And uh, also it has um, the uh, 1790 for resistance. It has the prior high right here into the 1851. And then once it escapes this high, it's going to run into the 1829. 2000. And then it has a huge extension all the way 2200 and 2300. Okay. So it has a lot of room to continue higher. And in fact, I'm going to go here uh, to show you where we got in Broadcom. All right. So Broadcom, the first entry was 1634. It was based on the daily and the second entry 1661. And this was on July 1st. Okay. This was on July 1st. All right. Uh, all right. Let me just get here. Okay. So this is the first stock uh, 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 this is Broadcom. And yes, I'm in it. The second stock that has strong potential for the end of the year is NVIDIA. I'm going to start with the yearly. As you guys see here, this is the velocity zone over, uh, over, uh, uh, over $30. Like, hello. <laughs> All right. It was like 300 something dollars because it split. It had a 10 to 1 split. All right. So if you liked NVIDIA then, you got to love it now, right? So this is the split right here. That's why you're seeing these prices, $30. Yeah, because I bought it in 2016 at $32, okay? I should have brought my, uh, I should have opened my account so you, you guys can see uh, when I bought it. But next time, in the next video. All right, so uh, this is the inflection point. Look at this yearly. Wow. Uh, one of the things that I forgot to tell you about, Bro uh, about Broadcom, because I made a note here, because I know that I'm talking a lot and I just wanted to share something with you guys. Uh, no, nothing. Odell, first of all, you know, I'm looking at NVIDIA for, uh, you know, long term. I could care less about the noise that is happening like intraday or in a month. I don't care. I don't care. I've been holding it since 2016. So, <laughs> yeah, I really don't care about some noise. Oh, if there is a pullback, awesome. I'll buy more. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to go back to Broadcom to uh, tell you some facts that are very interesting because uh, not a lot of people know, and I haven't seen any educator. And tell me if I'm right or wrong. So uh, Broadcom has a dividend at $5.23 per share. Oops, sorry. I got something in my 
$5.23 per share. And the dividend is paid quarterly, quarterly. So even if, if you hold it in your long-term portfolio, the stock could be trading at $1,100 or $800 or $300. You are still getting paid. So you're getting your dividend, okay? So you're getting your dividend. You're being rewarded for keeping the stock. You're part of the company. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? It is very cool. But because think about it, you have 100 shares times $5, that's free money that is coming to your account. Needless to say, if you have 1,000 shares or 10,000 shares, now you have the opportunity to get a bunch of shares because of the stock split. So think about it. Think about the investing, uh, you know, think about the investing side, not necessarily, oh, I'm going to buy it here and sell it here, right? Immediately. Don't think chicken. Don't be, you know, like, I know, don't be a chicken, <laughs> chicken head. My mentor would tell me this, like, don't be a chicken head, okay? All right. So yeah, don't be chicken and don't buy, oh my God, I'm so scared. No, buy it in your investing account. Determine your risk tolerance, your personal risk tolerance. Buy it in your investing account. It's going to reward you like, um, and yeah, it, it's it's actually phenomenal. It has 1.23% per year. One point, So you're getting a lot of money just because you're holding it. Now, how many of you got, how how many, and how, like, is there anybody else that have to, has told you this information? Just curious. Because everybody's like, oh, let me teach you this strategy. Like chicken heads, right? Did anybody type a one in the room if you have heard this before? Like seriously. No, because everybody, what they're doing is they're marketing, right? Oh, let me tell you my greatest strategy. I made this here. I made, oh, let me tell you how you can build this strategy. I don't need a hundred strategies. I need, I need just one strategy that is going to work. Okay. Nobody's going to tell you this, but when you buy for swing trading or for investing, determine your time horizon. OK, and don't be scared because if you select some high dividend stocks and you can make a list of high dividend stocks and I have like a freaking bonus for you at the very end it's going to blow your mind. OK, and no, you're not going to hear anybody talk about it. Right. You're not going to hear it. I, I could guarantee. OK, so Broadcom, the next one is NVIDIA. Like I said, the projections. Oh, and by the way, the video, this is the daily in NVIDIA. We are in NVIDIA. Okay, but look at the daily. The daily looks perfect. If it takes out this high, the 132.92 uh, out on Monday, I'm going to be adding more probably. And I'm going to shoot for the prior high into the 141. Okay, so I'm going to go here on a monthly chart or maybe on a weekly chart. Yeah, let's go on a weekly chart because it's better here. And see how far can NVIDIA really go? Right? How far can NVIDIA really go? So because I have a pivot here, uh, I don't know. So this one is really on the fly here. So um, let's do this. Let's do this. You see this little pullback that happened here in 2022? Let's try to do this and then, because it makes a lot of sense. Okay, let's do this. Okay. So as you can see here, uh, we stalled into June because we're hitting resistance at 137, right? And we're right here. We need to take out this uh, this 137. Actually, it's a 140 high right here. Yeah, it's a 140 high. We need to take out the 140 high. It's been digesting between 136 and 140. And let's go to the daily. Okay. And you can see here the grind, right? Let's take this off. Okay, let's take this off, right? You can see the grind here. This is the first peak above that 137. Grind, 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 grind. The reason for that is because of this. Did I just delete that? Okay, I did. Okay, let me do it again. Okay. No, let's do it on the monthly. Like I said, and the monthly looks... Um, I want you guys to be able to see it better. And I don't know. No, I think still the quarterly. Oh, I did it wrong. Hold on. You got to have a lot of patience when you're doing it. And here it is. Okay. So where can it go next? Where can it go next? 
you're going to find yourself in situations where you're not going to have enough extensions to the upside. Can you add extensions? Yes, you can. But I don't. I don't. So I was taught not to. So basically what you do here, you try to find inflection points that are present on smaller time frames. For example, here, okay, or here, or based on this very small retracement over here on the monthly. So that's what I do. So I connect this to this because I knew that I have resistance there on the daily, right? And that's why it was meandering right into, into these highs. And we have another time frame that confirms heavy, heavy, heavy resistance here. And then I pull it back and I say, okay, so it has room to go into the 167. So this is my projection going into 160 to 167 into the end of the year, okay? Remember, we have two earning cycles. One that it, I, when is NVIDIA going to report? Uh, August. It's going to report in August, right? So NVIDIA is going to report in August. And uh, it has one more into the end of the year in November. So it has two earnings left. What do you think NVIDIA is going to do? Again, we're talking long-term projections. I'm not talking about a trade from today to tomorrow, okay? All right, this is, and again, Micron, Micron, Okay, first of all, yearly chart. Look at this gorgeous inside. This is early entry, add over this, extending higher, just beautiful. Quarterly has an inside candle. Quarterly doesn't have velocity yet. That's why it's not going anywhere. Uh, monthly chart, monthly chart, we need, to, uh, we need to close this month. So I believe that Let's see when um when it has earnings. So earnings are coming in in September, in September. Oh, yeah, yeah. Earnings in September. So we have a lot to wait. A lot can happen into September. Okay, but needless to say, we're on a monthly. So let's start looking for some extensions and some projections for uh 2024. 2024 174 90. It's very possible and going towards 200 to 250. But I would say this this would go like 200, 250, 200 to 250. Uh, it is a strong possibility to have it into 200 by the end of the year. Uh, but I'm expecting 250 next year. Next year by May, May, June, something like that. Okay. So this is Micron. AMD, a lot, um, a lot, um, a lot more bullish. Uh, quarterly chart. Take a look at the quarterly chart. This is a gem. Okay. Over 187.30, this is going to blast off. Uh, we currently have a high here of 187.28. Write this down. Because if you see the price in AMD over 187.30 and 30 cents, it's going to start blasting and it's going to go here to 226. Okay. So it's, it's super, super bullish. Super bullish. This is something that you may consider for your portfolio. Yes, there is uh, still a little bit of resistance here. That's why we have this pullback over here uh, of one uh, into the 194. But if it takes out the 194, so it has two levels that needs to break. First of all, the 187.30 and then the 194.35 over 35. And it's shooting into the all-time high plus the 232. And then it has a, a lot of room higher. Uh, remember that when stocks uh, typically start running into the 100 level, very easily they start running towards the 200. Once the 200, they start running, they run from 100 point increments. Uh, just like very small stocks, stocks that are priced below $100, they move, for example, from $40 to $50, $50 to $60, and so on and so, so on. Confident? Well, I'm confident because I'm seeing the levels here. I've been doing this for 25 years. <laughs> so yeah, confidence comes from what you see on the chart. So it's clearly 100% that if the price is going, and of course, just quick disclaimer, you know, I can't use these terms, but for my trading, if I see this, I'm freaking buying with both hands. Like I'm telling you exactly what I'm doing. I'm buying with both hands. All right. Uh, LA Lily. This is a, this is literally a miracle uh, stock. This is the only stock that I have uh, from healthcare. This is tremendous. Take a look at this. This is this year. This year top last year growth uh, in size of candle. That means 
uh, last year. Take a look at this. It, it, it's just going ballistic. Okay. It's just going ballistic. All right. So where is this going? Okay. We're going to take baby steps with this one. Okay. This is monthly chart. This is a weekly chart. And this is a daily chart. Okay. You can see the daily chart right here. So it's moving up, basing, up, basing. So I'm going to go to the weekly chart because I have some pivots over here. And I could determine some projections into it. And with this one, I own L.I. Lily from 2016 as well. That is when I um, actually, I sold a lot of the stocks that I held from 2009. And I was able to have a really good chunk of money and start buying something else that was moving into the market. Because I was sitting on that account for a really long time. Uh, but anyways, L.A. Lily, you're going to go baby steps from week to week, okay, from week to week. So we're going to look and see what the targets are here, okay? So L.A. Lily is, and I could have told you that without using projections because of what I just said earlier, because when it's trading over 900, it's going to start going to 1,000. It's going from 1,000 to, to 1,200. It's going to skip the 1,100, all right. I'm not going to tell you why now. I, we teach this in our investing course. But anyways, uh, so it has a lot of room to go into a thousand and over that to twelve hundred dollars. So this is L.A. Lily. Amazon. Amazon. Take a look at Amazon. This is the weekly chart. Let's take a look at the quarterly chart. OK, look at the quarterly chart. Super strong. Pull back here. Obviously, every tech stock had a pullback in 2022. High to low. OK. We just pass through the resistance area into the 188 and take a look. We have room to 217 and we have room to 250. Do we have room higher? Uh-huh, we do. All the way to 360. So by the end of the year, at least $250. By the end of the year. Google, and these are all stocks that I'm in, by the way. I'm already in, but I'm looking to add to them. Google, also a really, uh, really great stock projections for it high to low right here trading into resistance that's why you're seeing some divergency and some pullbacks next spot is going to be 250 to 260 don't skip the 250 don't skip the 250 250 and 260 we have apple quarterly chart super strong look at the base here omg like this is strong velocity over here Okay, over $200. This was the line of the sand. Remember what I was telling you guys about 200, 1,000, about the whole number psychology? It developed resistance into the whole number, into the 2,000. What happened after? It blasted. Take a look. It's $30 higher. So how high can it go? Let's take a quick look and see where it's going. Remember, these are quarterly charts. Uh, into the end of the year, we see $250, $280. And if it snaps above that, as we're going in 2025, 300 to 350. If you, uh, and by the way, by the way, by the way, uh, please, those of you guys that have, com uh, uh, yeah, confidence comes from practice. Absolutely, but it's not rocket science. Please watch the video that was included into this invitation to this event. Watch that video very carefully. Have a chart aside because those I made those projections on January 3rd, January 3rd, okay? So more than six months ago. And look at where the prices are now to the T. And this is all technical. Like I don't have any special, any special crystal ball or connections to Wall Street. No, okay. All right, Costco, my favorite stock. Love the fact... Finally, it's pulling back. Finally, it's pulling back. Uh, I love it. So when it pulls back, it's fantastic. I hope it pulls back a little bit more. I hope it pulls back to the 765 or to the 700 level because that would be great. Uh, I own Costco. I love Costco. And uh, from the swing standpoint, because I want to I want to have more into my swing account, more of these stocks into my swing account, not necessarily in my investing account. Uh, but anyways, this has also a great potential. Let me show you just the quarterly chart real quick right here. Okay, so you can understand it. High to low, we're going to connect these high to low pivots. And in fact, this represents, oops, sorry. 
uh, this is uh, actually uh, the pullback was uh, only one quarter in 2022. So the next projection is going to be into the 945 and the 1000 level. Remember what I mentioned about the 1000 and the 1200. These are going to be the next two projections into the end of the year. By the way, by the way, confidence. Uh, let's talk a little bit about confidence before we jump into the uh, QCOM. Whenever you, how many of you guys shop at Costco? I go to Costco. I have a Costco that is really close by. That's a bummer because I'm there all the time. <laughs> all right. How many, how many of you, just type a one in the room. Just type a one or raise your hand or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't know you guys, but every time I go, the parking lot is a zoo. <laughs> Inside is a zoo. It's crazy. Everybody shops at Costco. They have great products, better prices, right? I mean, why not? Why not? They increase their, and by the way, the pullback is because they increase their membership and that's going to kick, kick in, I think, in August. Who cares? Do you think that people are not going to go to Costco just because they increase their membership? No. No, I don't. I don't, though. I don't, though. I have those for long, long, long term. Like I said, I had NVIDIA since 2000. I made a lot of my stocks I have from 2016. I'm not selling. I'm selling when I want to buy something. If I want to buy a house, if I want to buy, I don't know, something, then I sell something. Or I borrow against my portfolio. Yeah, I'm not even selling. I'm buying against my portfolio. Yeah. So I take a loan. And I am literally using my portfolio as a backup. Okay. So last one, QCOM. This has really great potential. Great potential, guys, for this year. Um, high to low. All right. We have the 217, 249 right here. These are immediate targets. And then we have the 300 and the 340 to 350. Okay. This would be like December and first quarter of January. All right. And then I have a big surprise for you. Do you guys know what this says? V-O-O. -O. People will pay exactly, Ben. Uh, Mara, so I, I, I want to go back to your question. If I sell when it hits the fib, no. I look for a, uh, I look for a reversal sign if I have to sell. Just because it's into resistance, see, when I trade, when I day trade, when I swing trade, or when I invest, when I, when I hit resistance, I wait for reaction. If I have, if I have a turnaround pattern, if I have a rejection pattern, then yeah, I'm selling some, depending on, depending on the case. But what, what you can do is maybe scale some, but not a chance when it's hitting resistance. You need to have a sell pattern. A sell pattern is, for example, when this see this is a sell pattern that failed, right? A sell pattern is when you have the price going. Here it is. This is a sell pattern when you have the price going against the prior candle low, right? This is a sell pattern, but it's above the ten EMA. You don't sell, okay? You don't sell. All right, let's take a look at some projections for VOO, and I'm going to tell you exactly what this is, okay? All right. Uh, okay. So first of all, first of all, I needed to see here the, um, okay. So this is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. Okay. So this is Vanguard uh, S&P 500 ETF. This is the quarterly chart. Now, did you guys know that there are so many advantages of, of having this in your investing portfolio? Uh, is there anybody in here that has VOO in their investing portfolio? No, nobody. What if I told you, what if I told you, you, you have to have it. Like, you have to have it. 
What if I told you that they pay $6.62 a share dividend? What if I told you that? Do you guys know what the year return is this year? 26.09% 26 26.09 cuz I I wrote it down from my from my account. 26.09 and throughout the last 10 years 12.78% and that's because of the pullback that we had in 2022. This is a no-brainer guys. You need to have this in your portfolio. You need to have this in your portfolio. Like I don't know Consult your financial planner, advisor, et cetera. I'm not your financial planner. We're just talking stock than what I have in my portfolio. And then it has a huge projection towards the 600. So it has tremendous growth into it. From the daily, it's just like, it's just like the spice, right? It's just like the spice because it's Vanguard's S&P, but it's much better than the spice because of the dividend because of the dividend and it has lots of volume. So this is the bonus uh, ETF. This is the bonus ETF that I wanted to share with you. Uh, and I'm gonna send you more information about it along with this recording. If you guys are interested in learning more, I'm gonna share more information about VOO, which not a lot of people know, not many people know and it trades about 7,000 shares daily so it has a lot of volume spill the beans <laughs> Michael I'm gonna send it okay I'll send all the information about VO in a, in an uh in a in the email along with the recording all right so guys this is it for uh for this session I love you more, Michael. <laughs> All right. So I just want to share something with you guys. If you would like to. Oh, and I have to share something else with you guys. Yeah. Sorry. We're not done. We're not done. We're not done. <laughs> All right. So first off, I want to do a, a little shout out to our program. It is the Stock Swing Trader. If you want to become a member, uh, we, I have been running this program since uh, 2024 you don't need anything else but access to this. I have memberships to everything under the sun, scanners. I use three scanners. I use everything, like I said, under the sun. You don't have to pay uh, anything uh, to extra uh, than uh, access to the program. Otherwise, that you would pay probably over $6,000 a month. And I'm not kidding because I have a lot of subscriptions to uh, professional um uh, charting, professional scanners, and so on and so forth. So if you want to access the Stock Swing Trader and get started right away, this is what you can expect. So basically, you could go to the link here, which is going to take you to this page. Uh, yeah, we're going to have uh, we're going to have more training in investing very, very soon. Uh, and it's going to be free. Uh, but it's coming up, I, th I, I, I hoped it would be ready, but I'm so busy that I wasn't, I, I don't have time for it. <laughs> so anyway, so if you want, we have a monthly plan and a yearly plan. And what this does, it gets you access to uh, a newsletter that is being sent out. This is just a sample. Uh, and it's a newsletter that is sent out every Monday night, Monday afternoon towards night, depending on how the market is. Because sometimes I like to watch how the futures market uh, opens and trades a little bit into the new day and new week on uh, on Mondays, right? So I tend to uh, do the um, newsletter between six and nine o'clock at night on Monday. So I can see a little bit of a price action. Uh, and uh, you're getting some information about the market, what was, what can be. You're getting a weekly market outlook. It's a video just like this, like we did, uh, like we did today. So uh, you're going to hear about the Qs, the Spice, Diamonds. You're going to hear Russell commentary. For those of you that do options, I'm going to give you exact levels for this. We have a lot of options players. I don't do options, but we have a lot of options. So I give entries and uh, stops and targets, precise targets. You saw how precise I am with the targets. Uh, also, uh, you're going to get uh, analysis on gold. You're going to get oil. Plus, you're going to get uh, the stocks that are super hot. 
uh, for the oncoming earnings season and for the oncoming trades. You're also going to get a video here that you click, like I said, with all the details. And basically what we do here is the market outlook plus all the stocks that were uh, that are in play uh, into the next week. You're also going to have access to the performance portfolio that I'm going to show you uh, in a second. You have the earnings calendar. You have the economic calendar. You have weekly and monthly performance, which is very important because you get to uh, understand why we're selecting, for example, stocks that are part of the technology sector, what has performed uh, within the last month or so. Here you have you know, trailing suggestions and all that fun stuff. If you want tools of the trade, what I use, uh, this charting that I've used, TrendSpider, et cetera, um, and a lot of details. Like I said, I, I use Benzinga Pro. I use Bar Chart Professional. So I use a lot of services. And if you want to use what I use, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, I'm just posting them right here. All right. Um, so, um, okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Okay, this is the performance portfolio. Many of the stocks that I covered today um, are part of our performance right here. So are part of our trades and of our um, um, our account. So as you can see in July, we bought Broadcom that I showed you the chart and I showed you uh, exactly the levels where we got them. Uh, we have NVIDIA as well. And this is an ad because we have been in NVIDIA since 124. Right. So, for example, here in video, just want to go back in here. So, as you can see, we have been here since 124 or so. Where is the 124? Uh, 124. So, it has been, we have been in for a while. Okay. Like here below. All right. So, just wanted to show you uh, where we are. Uh, this is an ad. We are in Micron. Uh, for this week, we have two top watches, Intel and SOXL. Uh, last month, and you could also see uh, the performance. And by the way, if you see a hundred here, is because we have not exited yet, and the, the uh, this sheet shows that a hundred. But when you close the trade, you can see it here. It goes to the uh, allocated percentage. But you can see here, uh, like the majority, uh, the majority of stocks are still in play. We have Nvax, we have TXN, we have Dell, we have SNCI, we have Netflix, uh, PANW, Merck. We have the queues. We're still in the queues, by the way. Can you believe it? We're still in the queues. Q, Q, Q. Take a look at this. Take a look at this chart. Tremendous. Do you know where our entry was? $480. That's where we got it. $480 right here. This is our entry. You see what happened here? One, two, three, four. Why shouldn't we have confidence? It's an ongoing trend. It's a 180 reversal. It's off of the 10 EMA. We have a clear stop for 73. We have a clear entry at 480. We have a clean first target into uh, 489, this prior high right here. And then we have extensions. So we based on it, we knew that it was going to go higher. Okay. So yeah, do all the trades work? No. Okay. But it, I would say the the uh, average is like 80 to 85% of the, uh, of the trades work, 80 to 85. Okay. All right. And um, I just want to show you real quick, like from January, uh, most of the, all the trades are closed in January, 94% win. 94% win, guys. Remember, 8 to 10% with a fund. Uh, in February, 13%. In March, we still have uh, we still have some trades that are open in CTRE and uh, ARC B. These are long term. Uh, in April, 55%. Look how we just had a very few trades in April. Very few trades in April. We made 55%. Uh, in May, in May. Huge month for us. Huge, huge, huge. Take a look. 23% we did in Moderna. Alone. Alone. Huge wins right here. We still have these trades that are ongoing. We have Merck. We have eBay. eBay is taking a long time to break out, but it's breaking out and uh, heading into our targets. Uh, Mara. Mara did very good on, um, um, uh, very good on Friday. Uh, you have June. You saw June, et cetera. So you can see what it's all about. And we have a um, a uh, we have a uh, X account, a private X account, in which you're going to receive updates. 
So uh, last night I closed in saying another great week for us. Hope you have a great weekend. You're going to see here that I said Intel trying to break out again. So this is going to be a top watch. You can see here it's sort of a sandwich breakout over $35 and change. Uh, it's going to have a run to uh, the $37 and about 70 cents here. Uh here, some updates, or you're always going to get some updates on these charts. CTRE is very volatile. They're trying to grind towards target two at $28. Target one was already achieved. Uh, eBay that I showed you guys, I said we need to see it above the $35.35. Uh, $35. This is another secondary breakout. We took it out. The first breakout is heading towards the secondary breakout. Here's Mara keeping the base nicely. Uh, here is Rivian. Uh, for example, Rivian is one of our huge, huge, huge trades. Okay. Invax, uh, again, it's trying to do a rotation. If we hold the momentum, we should go higher next week, meaning th this upcoming week. Uh, TXN 180 yesterday, uh, today, one uh, uh, really nice rotation. Uh, I was referring to the 180 uh, reversal. Dell, this is also very good. SMCI. So you get updates on this and they're live because what you do is you enable notifications right here. There's a little bell right here when you uh, join the program. When you join, and by the way, you have to have uh, an account with us. You have to be a member of the Stock Swing Trader right here, either the $299 or the $299. To $2,999 to have access to this. But you get access to all this. You get access to all this, like real-time updates with charts, with everything, so you understand it. Because if you're at work, you don't know what's happening into the market. All right? All right. So uh, let's see, guys. Uh, Michael, on an account, I want you to put it. It depends on your risk tolerance. You, you could put half. You could put a quarter in. Yeah, you can start with the quarter in and then you can um uh you can add at any at any setup if that helps. All right, it all depends on your personal risk tolerance. Yeah, risk tolerance. All right, so with that being said, guys, let me know if you oops, sorry about that. I did that. My bad. All right, so let me know if you guys have any uh any other questions. Vita, great session as always, informative, real, and smiling, always answering questions. Thank you so much for energy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, My Michael. I appreciate it. Okay, guys. So this is it for today. I hope you guys are going to have a phenomenal weekend. I know it's been like two hours. I know it's it's a lot to talk when you start talking about the market. The bonus is VOO, Tim, that can make you possibly millions, depending on Yes. All right. The VOO. Okay. Of course. All right. So thanks so much, everybody. I will see you guys very soon. Like I said, I'm going to send you more information about VOO and this recording. Uh, and uh, also a link to our program uh, in an email that is going to be sent out throughout the day today. So thanks so much, everybody. I will see you guys. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend.